Hi guys, David Baker here. I just did my makeup, so I thought I would do another video. Um, so I'm gonna do my coming out video today, and it starts a long time ago. Um, I, you can say I pretty much always knew it. I just kind of deep down, it was always there. Uh, my first experiences were with other boys in my early years, you know, when kids played doctors and nurses and what do you have and what do I have and I preferred the boys. And at that time, that didn't seem odd to me. Um, so after a couple years, uh, around the age of seven, I was visiting my mother in, in Houston, Texas, and she was watching one of her soap operas. I can't remember the specific one, but it would have been funny if I could. <laughs> I, um, one of her soap operas was portraying homosexuality as AIDS. That's kind of how the AIDS epidemic was portrayed as a gay disease. And at that time, I mean, we're, we're talking 1987, 80, maybe 88. So we're still at the height of the AIDS crisis and they were still portraying everything as um, you were gay, you had AIDS. So at seven years old, I started to have a panic attack and I went and told my mother what had happened and how I had done these things and unfortunately at that time it was not handled correctly and because of that it made made for some issues down the road um, and it's something that I've been actually dealing with lately so it's actually really good to talk about this again because it does kind of help to figure out why things are the way they are so um, because the hand situation wasn't handled correctly I ended up really locking it all down and I, the only real experimentation that I really did was I tried to have a couple beards <laughs> girlfriends in junior high, um, which turned out badly because I got made fun of more because I wouldn't kiss her, and that just was a whole nother issue, so really didn't have very many of those, just a few at max, and then I never, ex never experimented with any boys of, of any kind for any of my teenage years. Um, at the age of 16, I had finally moved to Florida where I basically ran away from the situ my home. My situation just wasn't good, and there was just a lot of family issues going on, and between being heavy set and <laughs> bad situation, grades weren't great, all these other issues going on that really made it very easy for me to push being gay back into, and into the closet. And, and not, yeah, not just in the closet, but in the back of the closet. Um, so I moved to Florida at the age of 16 and I started working for a construction company, a friend of the family's, um, kind of like a father took me in under his wing and gave me a job and helped me out for a few years. And while I appreciate the job and I love you know, I love the experiences that I've had. 
it wasn't the right place at that time for me to come out. So I did not. <laughs> but after a few years of this, it started to weigh on me. And uh, around the age of 19, I lost 150 pounds and really kind of started to come into my own skin. So I started to really get anxious about working where I was and doing what I was doing and with the people that I was with and I just felt like something wasn't right so I eventually moved back to Iowa where I'm originally from and my brother was living there and he let me move in with him I started it back at started college community college at the time and my got my first job at a strip club and <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I've met some of the most amazing people in my life through that place. And after about a year of working there, I was ready to come out. I, <laughs> learned a lot. I saw a lot and met some very good people that really helped me be comfortable with me. And it just so happened to be that we were going to a Nine Inch Nails concert, a big group of friends of me and my of mine and myself. And it was a four hour drive, so we got a hotel and a bunch of us went up and stayed there and went to Nine Inch Nails and walking into the show and walking out of the show, I was two different people. That, there's no doubt in my mind. There was literally the lights came up and then came on and I just, it was like an aha, aha moment. I knew, I just knew at that time it was all all okay and it was kind of neat because as soon as the lights had came on I had looked down and there was a skull medallion necklace that someone had lost and at the time I just I mean there were so many people it was already madhouse people going everywhere and so I had just reached down grabbed it set it put it in my pocket but it became a, a very precious memento um, memento <laughs> that I had for many years and uh, always reminded me of that that night and uh, it was a cool night it was really cool just the way everything just changed it's like everything in my mind it just snapped into place and I didn't say anything to anybody we drove home the next day van full of people and didn't say a thing to anybody my uh, I had another couple friends that didn't go to the show this was a lesbian uh, excuse me this was a lesbian couple friend of mine and they were watching my dog while I was at the show so I went to go pick her up and sat down with her and told her she was the very first person that I told and after that, I couldn't handle waiting much longer. So about within a couple weeks, I had told my mom, um, which she handled it pretty well. She uh, had no idea. Hmm. Um, you know, on the from the outside looking in, I'm you know I'm a very masculine kind of looking guy, and she just never never knew had no inclination of it at all. Um, so that was, it was hard on her in the sense that she felt bad that she just didn't know. She thought she knew who I was and just was, that was harder on her for, than that, for that. But um, she was, she was very nervous for me to tell my brother and so was I. Um, he was definitely one of the people that made it harder for me my whole life to come out because he teased me and made, you know, any chance he could, he made fun of me. So 
being gay was definitely on that list. And uh, I was definitely very nervous. But sat him down and I, I'm like, I need to tell you something. He thought I got a girl pregnant. I said quite the opposite. <laughs> And I said, I'm gay. It took him a minute. He processed it. But after that, he gave me a hug and told me that I'm his brother. And there would be nothing that would change that. So, um, family's actually been pretty, pretty good. I've definitely been very fortunate to be able to open people's eyes that being gay is okay and it comes in all shapes and sizes it is most definitely not a cookie cutter <laughs> so family was cool um, we waited a few years to tell my grandparents that was a hard thing for my mom to deal with and then my grandma wasn't sure how my grandpa would deal with it and then but in the end, he's been awesome. I have ha I've got a great relationship with him, thankfully, and and our relationship has actually gotten better since. He there's certain things that he won't say now that he <laughs> knows, so it's just it's a lot better. And I've definitely opened their eyes and 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 again many people's eyes to the fact that we can be anybody. So at that point, I. Because again, I'm I'm pretty much an all or nothing type of guy. So I stuck my toe out of the closet and then I took a step back and then I busted that door down. <laughs> and how I decided to bust the door down was after a night of partying with my first boyfriend, we decided to go back to the strip club and I walked hand in hand with him right into the VIP lounge, sat down and started making out. <laughs> and that's how everybody at work found out, other than the small handful that didn't know, <laughs> that did already know. <laughs> um, so that was pretty funny. My boss was pretty freaked out. He was a bit of a homophobe. Um, and again, fortunate enough to have changed his opinion because after working with him for a long time, he was, he knew who I was and that it didn't change anything. So, uh, in the end, it was very fortunate. And, um, one of the only real losses that I had, um, came from one of my best friend's sisters and I were very close and I thought of her as like a, my best friend, as a, as a very good friend and unfortunately she thought there was more. I never, we'd never kissed, we'd never done anything more than that. We, at most, we slept in the same bed at times when we were hanging out, but never with clothes off, never, never anything physical. But unfortunately, she had already pictured the white picket fence and the whole nine yards. So the night I had come out to her, I had asked her to please not say anything to anybody yet because I was still in the process of doing this. This was my, my thing to do. Um, unfortunately, because I hurt her, <laughs> she did not comply with my request and told a few people. So we were all out one night, a group of us, and we got into it at the bar and they ended up all leaving and just left me and one other person there. And that was that. Her, her and I were never close again. We've, we've connected again now on Facebook or saw each other at an event and 
hugged and chatted and everything's fine now, but you know, obviously nothing was ever the same again. So, um, but on the positive note that night, the friend and I that got left ended up becoming very close and to this day she is absolutely one of my closest friends and I wouldn't be here, any, be here without her so thank you very much you know who you are anyway that's really about it we uh I think it pretty much covered all the bases I was very fortunate again um what I do want to say, though, is even though I was fortunate when I did come out, I did it at a later time in life. Um, when I was a kid, it wasn't okay. Like, it was still very frowned upon. If anybody was, they were very highly abused. And we had one kid in my high school that was out, and he was abused so bad I couldn't do it. I couldn't be open about it so I it shut me down and um, it, you know again since I'm going over these situations and the things that have happened we I, you know I can look back at that time when I was seven and you know being compared to if you're gay you have AIDS that really traumatized my mind and you know how the situations were were handled and again growing up things you hear and the things people say, words hurt so much more than you realize, uh, especially when it's coming from a family member, especially when it's something that you can control, you know, you just don't, don't open your mouth, don't say it, you know, it doesn't need to be said. You know, I, I like to live by the old fashioned rule is, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. There's just no point. And we don't need it. It's unnecessary. So we have enough pain in the world. Let's let's show some love and uh, let's watch what we say. Let's let those around us know that they are loved and that we are there for them. Because you really never know where someone else is at in their situation. So... That being said, I really appreciate you guys coming to, and watching my video. This was my coming out story. I know it was a little long. I appreciate you guys sitting through it and enjoying it with me. Um, feel free to please comment your stories down below. Make sure you like, subscribe. I've got lots more videos that are going to be coming out. Um, I, again, I really appreciate each and every one of you, and I love you all very much. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.